What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great finally freaking Friday. We'll be doing our live stream tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, like we've been doing for eight years. I can't believe we've been doing this for eight years. I can't believe that we are over 100,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. So I, I want to actually go through the numbers, okay? There is perception and then there is reality on things. And I want to actually give you a reality here, which I found something that's really interesting. I used to do more of this thing to, you know, we believe certain things. And unless you really look at the numbers, it you, you don't know for sure. And so as we've gone through here with free agency, we have Cowboy fans that are mad because we haven't signed big name free agents and things. And I say the Cowboys actually more bottom tier ones and have some success with some bottom tier ones. Sometimes, though, you need to go ahead and do more things. Now, one of the big moves that, you know, we all want, including myself, is, you know, they said, man, we should have went out and we should have gotten, you know, running back. We should have gotten uh, Derrick Henry. Um, and that the Cowboys just don't care about winning because they didn't go out and sign one of these guys. Now, here's the thing, and I want to go back to – Something I said when we were going through to pay Zeke Elliott, and I remember doing the numbers because there are exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, when a running back hits year number four, typically that is the peak and they go off of a cliff. They usually go down. Now, that's not to say that there's not the Frank Gores who can be an exception to the rule because he played forever. It's not to say that Adrian Peterson – or Barry Sanders and guys like that actually had better years beyond that. But typically speaking, that's few and far between that happening. They're the exception as opposed to the rule. And so here we have, I, I was going through with some of the you know free agent running backs and what they've done leaving one team and going to another because the Eagles, of course, you know, oh my God, we ended up getting, of course, um, Oh, uh, uh, Barkley and how great he's going to be. And that's the perception. And you look at that and say, oh, my God, they got, you know, Saquon Barkley and stuff. But here's what I want to do. I want to do a little exercise here. And I've gotten about 10 running backs that have changed teams and see how they have done going to another team. And the first one I want to go with is actually, um, surprisingly, this is actually a success story. Because we have actually, let, let me blow this up a little bit more here because I want you to really be able to see this. You don't need to see too much of me. Let me pull it down a little bit more here. Okay, so you can actually see the numbers to see that I'm not lying about this. Okay, so here's where we have Darren McFadden, his last year in Oakland. He ended up having 534 yards, averaging 3.4 yards a carry, which he had 3.3 the two years before. And he ended up having a monster year. In comparison, he had a 1,000-yard year the first time in five years with the Cowboys. Now, I, in 4.6 yards, he jumped up 1.2 yards a carry. Now, I will say at that time, 2014 was, you're looking at the peak of the Dallas Cowboys offensive line, and you had Tony Romo there. Um, excuse me, forget it, sorry. He bumped up, yeah, he bumped up 20, 2015. You had the Cowboys offensive line at the peak. You didn't have Tony Romo for four games, but had 4.6 yards of carry, which was great. That ten, you know, 1,089 yards, really good season. And I'm going to say that that was the exception in the rule because I think he went from a bad Oakland Raiders team with a poor offensive line, bad coaching, to at least the Cowboys that had a great offensive line. Now, we didn't have a quarterback because Romo was hurt most of the year, but that's that's a success. So, you know, for those thinking that Saquon is going to be a positive, there's, there's evidence right there that maybe he is better because he's going from an ass-ass Giants team that had a terrible offensive line to – the Eagles that have a good one. Okay, let's take Adrian Peterson. 
Adrian Peterson um, in 2015 had 1,485 yards um, and uh, averaged 4.5 yards a carry. He was injured most of 2016, only played in three games. 2017, he was let go, and he played for um, Arizona and New Orleans, and he dropped off the face of the earth after having, you know, four yards and a half pretty much every year of his career. He drops off to 3.4 for that season. He then goes to Washington, where he rebounded some, to 4.2 and 1,000 yards, um, but was never really the same back going from Minnesota, the team that he played for and everything else. Because you look at some of the monster years that he had, 1,485 yards, 2,000 yards, 97, uh, you know, averaging sometimes four, you know, five, even six yards a carry. Was not the same guy. DeMarco Murray. Holds the season season single season, single season for the Dallas Cowboys at eighteen hundred and forty five yards, averaged four point seven yards a carry that season. But you look at the years that he had with the Cowboys: five point five, four point one, five point two, four point seven, right? Doing damage. That dreaded year number four is the peak. Goes to Philadelphia. And literally drops off the face of the earth. 1,100 yards less and 3.6 yards a carry. Now, he did rebound a bit in um, Tennessee for one of the years, but still not quite as effective as he was. Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley was the Rams. The reason why they got to that Super Bowl. Todd Gurley, who was averaging, you know, look at Todd Gurley here, 4.8, 3.2, 4.7, 4.9. The last year, 3.8. Goes to Atlanta for a career almost low at 3.5, 678 yards. Miles Sanders, who looked fantastic with Philadelphia, signs a three-year, $24 million deal with Carolina and went from 1,269 yards to 432. 4.9 yards a carry to 3.3. Ouch. Now, truth in advertising, he did go from a good team to an ass-ass team. I will give you that one. Um, Dalvin Cook. Oh, my God. Dalvin Cook, who his last season, last four seasons in Minnesota, was over 1,100 yards every year, averaged over 4.4 yards a carry, Goes to the Jets. And again, this was to a bad team. Still, drops off the face of the earth. 3.2 yards a carry. 214 yards. Melvin Gordon with the Chargers. Now, Melvin is another one of those that's a little bit of an anomaly because he actually went um, from a down year with the Chargers. um, 3.8 yards a carry. Uh, 612 yards to Denver, where he rebounded um, and ended up having 4.6 and 4.5 uh, for the first two years and then kind of dropped off to where he is now, where he is like 3.1. So, so far, we've got two that actually played a little bit better than they did before. Kareem Hunt, whose best years were definitely with Kansas City, Um Yard average, he ended up averaging after he left Kansas City. It dropped from 4.9 and 4.6 down to 4.2s to where it is now, 3.0. And the final one I'll do is Zeke. And we have a lot of people that say, we need to bring Zeke back. But here's the reality of it. Um, Again, he went from a good team to a bad team. But you can look at Zeke Elliott from... 2019, from the time he got paid, every year his numbers have gone down. You know, look at the yards per game. 84, the year he signed the contract, to 65, 58, 58.4. And last year, 30, 37.8. And a career low, 3.5 yards a carry. So I say all this to say that 
I don't know what Barkley's going to do. Barkley is going to a better team where he's not having to carry the load. He may end up being better. He may end up being better. Won't guarantee it, but we'll see. My point on here, though, is typically looking at what running backs have done going from one team to the next. Out of all of those, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did nine of those. You only had two running backs that actually played better than they had the last previous year out of the nine. So that's about 26%. So thinking of signing Derrick Henry for $10 million and probably having reduced production of what he had, it would probably be, you know, maybe better than what we got with Tony Pollard. But the reality says it's probably not going to be as good and you're going to spend a lot of money. That's where it may actually be. The Cowboys may be right to look and say, I don't want to pay a lot for the running back. If I could have gotten the guy for, you know, five or six million, okay. But it's better off to use those resources at another position if they, in fact, do do that. And when you look at a deal like what the Cowboys did with Eric Kendricks, where the cap number is two and a half million dollars, that's four guys. That's four guys for what it would be for Derrick Henry. And so looking at that, are you better off spending $10 million in getting Derrick Henry? Or are you better off getting four guys in the realm of like Eric Kendricks and drafting a running back? And that's the games that you have to play and the chances that you have to take. Now, there's no guarantee that signing Eric Kendricks. Eric Kendricks could be Anthony Barr. Or he could be J. Ron Curse type of an impact that he had his first two years. You don't know. And there are no guarantees in football. But that's why you actually play the numbers. And as we look at this and we say, you know, here's all these teams that signed running backs. And you see that for the most part, they're not with that team for very long. They're not. Just there's no shelf life. And typically, their numbers continue to go downhill. So I actually have to say, here's maybe where the Cowboys actually got something right. All right, good people. We're going to try and bring you at least some stuff that at least can give you some hope. And I hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.